स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नमः Dear friends, welcome to the study of the Bhagavad Gita, and we have been revising the fourth chapter. And as it is a revision, I am not much interested in how many shlokas I read per day. My intention is that we. study it in such a manner that it helps us to transform our egocentric personality into the divine this is the main theme of the study of the scriptures of all denominations and religions how to achieve that state of awareness where nothing in this world can disturb you what to speak of disturbing you cannot touch you what to speak of touching you it cannot reach you you are much above all the difficulties and man made silliness of this life of ours now we have gone through a section from the shloka brahma phanam brahma vi to this shloka sarvam karma khilam partha gyane purisamapate shloka number 33 the main theme that we have studied all this is various procedures various methodologies various techniques by means of which a person can manage his own or her own personality in a single directional oriented manner that is while in this life i should know my self and as many humans we are so many are the paths but each human has these four faculties rationality emotionality ingenuity and determination so making these four faculties of a human our scriptures have excelled in teaching us how we can reach the goal through absolute rational method known as gyana yoga how to reach that goal through the method known as method of emotional identity bhakti yoga how to reach that goal by human ingenuity of performing the duties of my life day to day mundane duties how that can be converted into a worship of the divine that is karma yoga for you and behind all this you need a total control on your mind if the mind is not under your control if the mind keeps on roaming around all over the place you cannot be a gyana yogi you cannot be a bhakta yogi you cannot be a karma yogi raj yog 
is an essential, indispensable part of all yogas. And how it is to be performed through the flow of life. Life is an unending flow of activities and experiences. And purpose of our life is to profit us ourselves from that experience. So we had now gone through a section where it is a summation of some sections of Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, the psychic method of controlling your metabolic process, that is the movement of your mind and your body, and you direct it in such a manner that it leads to your desired goal. And we have come to the conclusion of these discussions in shloka number 33, which are now to move on to shloka number 34. What does he say? A very honest, diligent student. He has studied all these shlokas with great care. And he feels, I need somebody who has gone through these procedures, who has achieved that goal, who knows the ups and downs, difficulties and frailties of this journey thoroughly well, because he has walked this walk. So if I can get such a person, he will be my best guide. It's absolute commonsensical. Mind and intellect doesn't take you to any conclusion. That is why in our scriptures, mind has been identified as Sankalpa Vikalpa Atmak and similarly buddhi sorry, similarly buddhi has been said to be nishayatmika but that nishay can go in two different ways with equal reasoning and <coughs> conviction I've given you an example sometimes during the study of the classes why buddhi has to be concretized and reinforced by experience. Now I'll give you that example again. It's a real fact incident, not a story. Sir Rajbihari Bose was an excellent, excellent, par excellent lawyer, a jurist. He was unbeatable in his subject and he was the crown prince of lawyers of Calcutta High Court in mid-twenties and thirties. But he was under total influence of alcohol. He said alcohol stimulated his thinking. But sometimes, however he may say, he was occasionally disoriented. One day what happened? He was ready to go to the High Court to attend his duties, professional calling. At the gate of his house, he finds a very young girl with a sucking baby in her arms, sucking mother's milk, and a frail little girl, almost like a girl. 
And as soon as he saw Sir Bos, he fell at her feet, weeping and wailing and asking for protection and help. Of what? Her husband has been implicated in a murder charge and they are going to hang him. Where do I go with my child? Sir Rajbihari Bosch was very much touched by that young lady's agony. But he was in a hurry. He told his first assistant to comfort this lady, hear from her all that he has to say, and see what is it. With this instruction, he went. The first assistant found out it is an ironclad case that this man has performed that crime which caused the death of the person and he is behind bars. He was ready. Sir Bose was so impressed by that lady's agony, so touched, not impressed, so touched by it, as soon as he returned from his court, the high court, he asked that boy, what was that girl saying? So the person totally explained everything to him and told him, sir, to my understanding, it is an ironclad case. I don't see any way of protecting him from being hanged. Oh, is that so? As a test, as a trial, and as an education for you juniors, I will take up that case. So she sent for that girl and heard firsthand everything about it. To cut a long story short, the final hearing was fixed for a particular day. <clears throat> and Sir Bosch said, I will plead for that girl. You remain next to me for my references and my help. And he had a booze. He thought that would stimulate him. So the case was called. The defense lawyer was asked to defend his client. Sir Bose under the influence of alcohol. Yes, my honor. And he started arguing as a prosecution counsel. Now, Sir Bose's weakness of being under alcohol was known to everybody. And Lord Brevorn, who was the judge then, he listened to him for a while and he saw the way Sir Bose was going, it will be an ironclad case and that man cannot be saved. To be fair to sense of justice, Lord Brevon said, Sir Bose, my papers show you are here to defend your client. Please, though it is an incident a story, but I am striking at a point which will live with you during your study life, when you study the scriptures. Immediately, Dr. Bose 
and his servos got oriented. He understood what he has been doing. Now look at the ingenuity, smartness and intellect of that person. He immediately woke up as it were. He says, yes, my Lord, yes, I'm here to defend my client. Before I defend my client, I am placing before you what my learned friend, the counsel, the prosecutor and counsel could have said. And thereafter, one by one, he absolutely tore into threads the argument of prosecution that he had done, and the prosecution had not a word to say. He again dismantled the castle that he had built up. Rationally, he concluded in one direction, rationally he concluded in the other direction. So which direction you go? The direction is the goal of the scriptures, I have to be one with God. So in our Indian school of philosophy, there's the worst materialistic philosophy known as Charvakas. And their motto is Javad Jivet, Javad Jivet, Shukham Jivet, Rinam Kritva, Gritam Privit. As long as you are alive, live happily. If required, undergo an enormous death to have the best of everything aboard. Why? Bhashmi bhute shadire me punaragamana kutaha. When this body is burnt into ashes, who knows where I come or where I go? So let us make merry of this life. This is a school of philosophy prevalent in India and the school of Vedanta prevalent in India that I in my lifetime, get rid of my ignorance and bondage, and I reach my goal. Now, let us come back to the text. It is a double-edged sword. Rationality is a double-edged sword. If you want to prove something, tilting this side, you can with infallible logic. If you want to tilt that side, you can with infallible logic. What is true? The central point, what the scriptures say, your rationality should amalgamate with the wisdom of the scripture. So now we have read from 24th to the 33rd shloka, Hundreds and different of methodologies, procedures, techniques, performances, yajyas. And all of them say they are oriented to what? Think of the true knowledge of yourself. Ayavatma Brahma is the burning fire. And all that prevents you from knowing that is being given to the fire to be burnt out. And you are absolutely smelted, burnt, pure and clean. This is the main theme of all <coughs> these shlokas. Now, an honest student would say, Rationally, I have understood. But how do I reach there? How do I go there? I am rationally convinced that I must burn away my dirt, my dross, my frailties, my folly, follies. 
I burn away by the fire, no touch fire of knowledge. Jnana Agni, Agni Swarup Jnana, which burns away dirt and drops. That much I understand rationally. How do I practically go about it? Please remember that rational understanding and experiencing are two different states. The word knowledge is used in English, whereas jnana and anubhava, swanubhava karanam, you make it a part and parcel of your being by experiencing. How do you go there? How do you reach there? Who helps you? <coughs> you have intellectually convinced me that Gyanagni Dagda Karvanam Tamahu Panditam Buddha. It's in the Gita. That Gyana Rupagni burns away all my sanskaras and karmas and I am pure and simple. This Jivatma converts itself into Paramatma. This Atma knows it is Brahman itself. Therefore, shloka number 34 is necessary. What does shloka number 34 say? Tata Biddhi. Here, Biddhi again in English will be translated to know. To know that, tat is that, bhitti is to know. To know that, what have you to do? Pranipatena pariprasnena sevaya. Jnanina tatta darshina. That means a jnani purusha, and who is a jnani? Tattva darshi who has experienced what is known as sa sambedya chaitanya, self-evident awareness of I am, I am Atma Brahma, in answer to ko aham asmi, who am I? Thou art that, tattvam asi, ko aham asmi, who am I? The teacher says, you are that. Indescribable, that. Tarjani Adhar, that. Pointy of faith. And how to reach that? I don't know. So a person who has reached that, who has walked the way, who knows the obstacles and difficulties and pitfalls of this journey is the best guide. He who has experience is the best guide. So, please, Pranipata, Prakrishna Rupena Nipata, what is known as Shashtanga Pranam. Eight parts of your body touches the floor. The best example of humility, modesty, and surrendering your ego to that higher wisdom. Don't be carried away by the symbols. Always try to find out what is this symbol symbolizing. Pranipata, Prakrishta Rupena Nipata. Nipata means falling flat. Prakrishta Rupena, not on your back, but on your face. And in such a manner that eight parts of your body 
touches the floor. Discipline. You just were on flat. You fall flat in such a manner, you count ten parts of your body touches the floor. And what does it symbolize? It is a symbol. What does it symbolize? Total surrender of your I know. I have come to a person who knows better, who knows all. So I must swallow my ego, I must swallow my conceit, I should be totally surrendering, assimilating, absorbing. Modesty, humility. Without modesty and humility, there is no space in you to receive new ideas. You are full with your egoistic ideas. So Pranipata symbolizes these mental attitudes. Humility, modestly, being totally conscious, I know nothing about this journey. I have heard about the goal, but I do not know how to reach it. Therefore, I am surrendering myself totally to a greater wisdom. Pranipata. Then, Pariprasna. Prashna is questioning. What is this questioning? Kohavasmi, who am I? Katham, aham, banthosmi, why I feel I am in bondage? I am not free. Why do I feel that way? What is the reason? And how to get rid of it? How do I achieve Mukti? Three questions. As simple as that. Pariprasna means you keep on asking with humility, modesty. That means you are assimilative, you are absorbent and you have suppressed your ego to the farthest extent and you are waiting to fill up yourself with the wisdom of the divine. By relevant, pertinent questioning. So you see, questioning is not prevented, but questioning must be relevant. In Brihadarana Kupanishad, Mahati <clears throat> Prashnasi Gargi, Shira Nipatita, that is your head will fall to the ground because you are arguing for the sake of arguing. Ati Prashnasi, don't go beyond the relevance. Prashna should be relevant and to the point. Pranipata, Pariprashna and Seva. Seva means those people, having achieved the goal, have spent their total life after that, to chase after that. And having achieved that, they are absolutely physically worn out. So, you serve him. And there are three types of Shivaka. One is, he is told to do something and he keeps on forgetting he has to be told. The same thing over and over and over again. That's the worst type of Shivaka. Who is Madhama? He is Adhama. 
worst. Who is Madhama? He is very obedient, very retentive, but he has to be told. Madhama Seva, efficient doer. He looks after the Guru totally, but he has to be told to do so. He doesn't use his brains. And who is Uttama Sevaka? He foresees the requirement of the old man and before the old man can say, give this to me, it is ready before he asks. Uttama Sevaka. So Sevaya means you serve him as Uttama Sevaka. Not Adhama, not Madhama. So now listen. Tadviddhi. To experience that. Never say knowing. To know that. You have known it rationally now. Now to how to experience that. To learn that process. I need a person who has reached the goal. Who has walked his way and reach the goal. And to that person, I am totally humble, totally modest, and I have totally surrendered myself to a higher wisdom. Otherwise, we always think, I know everything, I know everything, I know everything. You are full of your egoistic appreciation of yourself, there is no space left to absorb something new. Pranipata Pariprasna Sevaya To whom? Tattadarshi Jnani He is knower and he is an experiencer. Both. Tattadarshi Jnani has to be served and properly questioned relevant to your journey and absolutely modest, humble, total surrender of my ego. If you can do so, Upadek Shanti, it's a grammatical usage where such a person if such a shevak is there, he has no other way but to share his wisdom with him. Upadeshanti, Upadesha Bhakshanti, Upadeshanti. He has to pass it to him because he has approached him in such a manner that it is his bounden duty not to die with that wisdom, but to leave it to the other generation. That is why generation to generation to generation, the concept of Jivanamukti is still available to us. So please don't read this shloka as a beautiful shloka. It is full of symbolical suggestion and please kindly go and find out what is it suggesting. Let me read this shloka again. Tatabiddhi, to experience that. Pranipata Pariprasna Seva. Pranipatena by Pradiprasnena by Seva by Sevaya. Gani Tattvadarshi. You approach him, and when you approach him in this manner, the symbols have been said, you man, man, approach him with this attitude. He is duty-bound to get you by your hand 
and read you there. This is the essential meaning of this shloka. Now, with this, a new section starts. It is said always that a man with common sense, he is within his rights to ask, what do I gain? You are only talking to me about disciplining myself. You are talking to me for a hard, back-breaking, sweating, perspiring duty. I am prepared to do so. Along with it, I do have the right to know what will happen to me. Could you kindly explain to me what am I in for so that I can weigh it in the balance of advantage and disadvantage, whether it is good for me or not. Absolutely rational, logical, and it is acceptable by our scriptures. So, to answer you before you ask him, shloka number 35, Jaj gatva na punar moham evang jashasi pandava yena bhutani asheshani drakshasi atmani atomai. Absolute description of what will happen to you when you realize your goal. Please read it very carefully and the previous shloka and this shloka are symbolized but remember the suggestion behind the symbols. What does he say? Judge Gyatwa. Knowing which, experiencing which. Judge Gyatwa means knowing and experience which. Napunareva moham jasyati pandava. Napunar moham eva moham jasyati pandava. He panduputra arjuna, having reached that goal, having experienced what I am Atma Brahma. In answer to your question, Ko Aham Asmi, who am I? The answer is Tattvamasi, and you experience, I am that. I am Atma from Judge Gatwa. You, this is the content of your experience. I am that. No more my worldly credentials stick with me. I know it is all transitory, ephemeral, therefore wrong, not real. It appears to be real, but not real. I understand all that when I reach there. Judge Gyatwa Puna. Puna means again. Mohameva Najasyasi. This type of ignorance will never, never, never come back to you again. Once you know your true original nature, just like you know today, my name is Sri Dharananda. Even if I am in deep sleep, if I call you by name, you will wake up. 
the identity is so strong. At that time, that identity is, I am so and so has moved from this area and it has gone to the area, I am that. I am Brahman. Jaj gyatva punar moham evam na gyatshasi. He pandava evam na jatshasi. You will never, never, never go back to that previous state again. Once it happens, it happens. It stays on eternal. And what is the quantum of that knowledge? What happens to you? Do you grow two horns and a long tail, as Sri Ramakrishna used to satirically say? What actually happens to you? He tells you what happens to you. Jena Bhutani Asheshani Drakshasi Atmani Asheshani Bhutani Atmani Drakshasi Asheshani Bhutani that is the whole diversity of this whole Katma. Drakshasi Atmani. They have all manifested from. I am the essence, the isness pure. Sat, Chit, Ananda, Sarup, Atma, Satta. I am everywhere. I am infinite. That is, space cannot divide me. I am eternal. Time cannot partition me. I am immutable. Cause and effect law does not hold on me. Therefore, I am absolute. This is what happens. Judge Gyatwa. And what you feel heart of heart as a human being? Sarvani Bhutani Atmani Drakshasi. And when you are more mature, that absolute will appear to you. Atho Mai. Vasudev had a form. You will see me in that form. That means your saturation is so complete that you see the Atman in that form. And it happened in Sri Ramakrishna's life. I'll quote that to you, what does it mean? Atmani Drakshasi Atovai. In me you will see everything. He was going to visit a particular place in Calcutta. It was a bit late. M. Mahendra Gupta Master Mahasaya was with him. Guru Maharaj said, that we are a little late. Ask them to take us to our destination to the, by the shortest route so that we can recover the delay. Unfortunately, the shortest route went through the red light area. You know what a red light area is? Where the fallen women stay. That area is known as a red light area. It was evening time and all the ladies were standing at their door, all made up in a fanciful dress to attract their clients. And M was feeling very, very embarrassed that why should we go through this area? 
And what happens to Sri Ramakrishna? He looks out of the window and sees all those girls, those ladies. And as and when he pass one door to other, and he says, Oh dear me, mother, I left you in the Shineshwar temple. And now, out of sheer affection for me, you are everywhere here. Thank you, mother, thank you. Dakshasi Sarvani Bhutani Atmani. And finally, if you are a follower of me, that is Avatara Rupa, you see me everywhere in that form. Just imagine what is that state of awareness. Let me read this shloka again. Jad gyatva napunar moham evam jasasi pardavaha jena bhutani asheshani drakshasi atmani atho vai. Thereafter, with further maturity, you see me everywhere or see everything in me. To see everything in me is a literal grammatical translation. But psychically what happens that your whole chitta, the whole mind stuff, the whole personality because of constant prayer constant remembrance, constant effort to identify myself with that, identify myself with that, you be and become that, and thereafter, your Ishta Deva, your Ishta Devi is manifest everywhere. That is the topmost state of spiritual realization. So, dears, let us stop here. Because these two shlokas are really very, very important for people who really want to know what is that spiritual achievement known as spiritual wisdom. So, right from the shloka, Tad Vidhi Pranipatena Pariprasnena Sevaya To this shloka Jaj Gyatva Punar Moham Evam Punar Moham Eva Najasasi Pandava Jena Sarvjena Bhutani Asheshani Drakshasi, Atmani, Atho, Vai, Thereafter, Atha means thereafter. You see the whole cosmos in me, in the form of your Avatara Purusha. Thank you, dears. Thank you ever so much for your patience. May the Divine bless us all. We'll again meet next Sunday to carry on the study. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu